we're going to dive in and again we are going to go start to finish for this demo so for many of you i think this is a refresher but wanted to make sure for anybody new maybe you're seeing it for the first time we want to go start to finish so we're going to name our project name our project and we'll say this is in Rocky Hill. I'm going to pick Kentucky. It's a great state. Once you enter this, now is a good time to save your project. Otherwise, you're going to be asked again when you try to add another bed in a multi-bed scenario, but just good practice either way. And what we're going to get here is our water quality pop-up that I'm sure many of you have seen. So as we all know, our retention detention systems can be an anchor for many other EDS products. So upon the first save, this pop-up creates awareness to the user of our Barracuda water quality tool that we have. Conversations and planning are underway for a unified customer experience within any of our ADS design tools. But for now, this simple pop-up just helps to create awareness and similar efforts have also been made on the Barracuda tool as well, reminding the user that we have a retention detention tool. So that's why this is here. And it'll pop up the first time the user saves their project and there's also some notes about it in the output email that they received. Okay, marching right along the manage projects button, a reminder that this is where you can go to load load old projects or to download output that was previously received on an old project so using the links that you see here on the screen. Projects that are older than 30 days need to be resubmitted to get output downloads again. And sometimes there's problems where we're not receiving the automated email from the tool with the links to those downloads, but you can always come to the manage projects area to get those same system outputs if we're having an issue with the email. Okay, so we're going to take the next step and start to insert our background. Uh, I mentioned earlier a background is necessary to have more than one bed in a project. This allows the interface to show all of the beds relative to each other on the overview tab, which you'll see here in a moment. And again, reminder, only one PDF can be imported. So we're gonna import a PDF. We're gonna use this Lakeview drainage. And you can select a multi-page PDF and then pull a single page from that PDF in this first dialogue that pops up. If it's just a single page, it's just gonna come in just as this one did. Once you bring in your background, you need to scale it. Um, that's really important to remember because the system doesn't know what scale it is. And there are two ways to do that. We have direct scaling and reference scaling. We always recommend if you know the scale to use the direct method. Um, it's usually a little bit more straightforward um, and a little bit more accurate, but you can use reference scaling. Um, and if I zoom out here, my scale on this drawing is one inch equals 20 feet, so I'm just going to adjust that. Click OK. I get a pop up recommending that the measure tool be used to verify that the background has been scaled appropriately. So we're going to do that. And that's just a matter of clicking length. And you know, you get as close as you can. But I think we we're pretty good there. So about 20 feet and that should be 20 feet. So our scale is good. Um, a quick reminder on that measure tool, the measure tool can be used at any time during design, so you can vary, you know, pull a length, maybe you're trying to understand what the bed length and width are, um, so you can use it at any time as you're working. The other method for scaling the background is reference scaling, and this should be used when you don't know the specific scale, but you have some known dimension on the plan that you can reference scale to. I'm not going to demo that today, but there is a video on scaling on the instructional video page that goes through the workflow to do that. Um, if I zoom out and I toggle move and rotate back on, you can rotate your background if you need to. So you would just hold on to this box and move it. But once you get scaled and once you like the way your background's looking, always good to lock that down to make sure that you don't change your scale without being aware of it. Um, what I'm going to do here is move my ghost array. We call this our ghost array. I'm sure many of you have another term. And we're going to focus on this first bed here. Um, quick note on our green arrow that's pointing up. 
it's best for multibed if you can have that green arrow always going in the same direction. You don't have to, but it's better. Um, and what some users get tripped up tripped up on early on is this green arrow will always point to the right of the output. So our output from this will actually be rotated 90 degrees clockwise. So just something to be aware of um, as you're designing in case you want it oriented a very specific way. Um, I'm panning around really easily here and just for everyone's awareness, I'm just using my mouse scroll wheel to scroll in and out. And if I hold my scroll wheel down, I can then pan and move everything around really easily. And this is very similar to what AutoCAD would be like for a user. So we've brought in our background. The multi-bed management panel is here, but we're not going to use that quite yet. You could, though. Um, you don't have to design one bed in order to start a second. The first bed just becomes an empty placeholder. So but we're going to come back to that in just a few minutes. So this project is actually a two bed specified 4500 system. We're going to change that up a little bit just to demo a couple things. And there's really two main ways to design a system in the tool. You can either you can use either method or you can do a combination of both. And really the two methods are using system parameters and generate design, which gets you something pretty conceptual really quick. Or you can use the components area. So we're going to show both of these on the demo today. Um, in either case, parameters for volume, length, and width, if you have them, it's good to enter them because then the color coding up here is relevant. As these boxes turn red, it means you have missed one of the parameters that you've entered. So if your volume's red, you're not hitting your, your volume um, of the system. So it's good to enter it if you have it. And it's really good for each bed to enter your base stone elevation because this will also transfer over to your system output and that proposed elevations table that I'm sure everyone's aware of. So we're going to use generate design and system parameters to design bed one. Let's assume we didn't know how many chambers there were here, but we're given a volume and basic basic length and width parameters. And again, remember, if, if you wanted to get the dimensions of this, you could use the measure tool to do that. So we're going to select our 4500. We're going to do 17,000 cubic feet. Um, length and width. Going to leave our stone above and below as the defaults, but this is certainly something you could up if you're struggling to hit your volume within a specific area. Uh, we're going to use a base stone elevation of 100. We're going to leave our porosity. This average cover, you can enter it, but it really doesn't impact any of the output. And then you do have options to include the under drain and include an outlet, so that would sh show up on your screen. So with your parameters entered, um, you can click Generate Design. Yep. And we're going to get a, a quick bed that meets those parameters. We were able to achieve that volume within the length and width that we specified. If we weren't, you would see a, an error pop up saying you haven't hit your volume in the area provided with some ideas for how to fix that. When we click generate design, we got one inlet and one outlet and the outlets there because we toggled that on. The structure type and the manifold size, these are just defaults that are based on the chamber model selected and the required volume. And these can be edited by the user using the manifold functionality available, which we, of course, will show in our demo today. The reset design functionality, I mentioned earlier that this functionality has changed a bit. Now, instead of resetting the entire tool, it simply resets the system that you're currently designing. Because especially for multi-bed, you may want to start from scratch on one bed, but you don't want to blow all the other beds away. Um, so we do have a modified functionality here for reset design. For this system, the default inlet and outlet are actually opposite of where I need them. So I'm going to hop over to my components panel to make some adjustments and just show some of the functionality here. I am going to, first of all, I'm just going to remove the inlet and outlet that came in. So if I select the inlet button and I select the chamber closest to the inlet I want to modify, which is up here, I'm going to get an option to edit or remove that manifold. So I'm going to remove it. 
And as I did that, that changed the perimeter of the system and had an effect on volume and length and width. So you always want to be watching here at the top that you're still meeting any minimum criteria that you've put, minimum or maximum. And we're going to do the same thing on our outlet. Select outlet, select the chamber closest to it. And we're just going to remove it. You could just edit it you know, or do something from there, but we're just going to remove it. Now, since my inlet's down here and I'd like my manifold to come across, I want to add these chambers back in. We just go over to add mode and I could auto fill. Um, you just want to be careful with this because if you have removed chambers from within the system, it'll fill them back in. Or you can just go chamber by chamber and your end cap should come in automatically. Uh, let's see, so we've added those in. Now we're going to add our inlet. We'll add that. A default comes in, but now we've got this dialog box that allows us to modify it in a lot of different ways. Um, and we're going to detail that here, but one big call out is the estimated manifold flow is shown here at the top. So if an engineer is worried about the allowable flow rate into the system, this will be updating real time. Um, and then I'm going to, we're going to detail all those other options in a minute. So I'm just for now going to go and add an outlet up here. And we've got our under drain. Unfortunately, right now, if your outlet is in the middle, like if I had placed it here, that under drain is not showing up quite yet. Um, so if you put it on a corner, you'll see it. You'll still see it in output, but it's not always showing up perfectly on the web. OK, and then the last couple things before we add our second bed and we'll detail some of these dialog box options is we've got some accessories. So you can add an inspection port. So maybe we'll put that on the end of the isolator row. And maybe there's some roof leaders coming in to the side of the system here. So you can add those. And these are just toggles. So if I accidentally put it on the wrong chamber, I just click it again, click the chamber that I want it to go on. Okay, so we've got our first bed designed pretty straightforward there. Now let's start to show some of the multi bed functionality. So I'm going to go up to multi bed management and I'm going to click add new bed. You're going to get a warning dialog box. Um, this appears because there are some interface changes that occur when a multi bed project um, comes into play. If you end up afterwards only having one bed it's not going to affect your output so you don't have to be overly concerned with this but we did want to warn the, the user that something is changing so if we click to that it's then going to ask you for bed name so all the beds have to have a name it asks you for the the name of the bed that you've just designed and the name of the bed that you're about to design there's some system defaults that populate or you can modify those if you need to so this is where the user waits for a few moments here and you're going to start to see some of the, the interface changing for multi-bed. And then once this gray screen clears out, we'll go over those in detail. And here we go. And just so I don't forget, I'm going to move my ghost array over here. Okay. So let's go through just some of the changes that occurred on the interface. They're very straightforward. So at the bottom, we now have some tabs. Um, and we put these tabs at the bottom because we know this is where in Autodesk a lot of the tabs would be located. So we thought that would be more straightforward for our users. There's an overview tab and this is where the user can see all of their beds relative to each other on the background. Any of the previously designed beds will show up as placeholders on the background. And anything that was designed previously can be edited by going to their individual bed tabs here at the bottom where you'll just see that bed on the overview. And, you know, I, ideally it would have been nice to be able to edit all the beds in one place, um, but for performance reasons, we had to kind of break that out separately. Uh, let's see. So we talked about the overview. There are now more buttons within the multi bed management panel. Um, and these buttons are available largely when you're on the overview tab, but when you jump to some of the individual bed tabs, they will be grayed out. And in a little bit, we'll talk about some of the functionality that's now available there. The newest bed that we just added, so that's my array that I just added over here, this can be designed on the overview tab. So it's kind of nice because you can see its proximity to the other beds, but you can also jump to its own tab and start designing it over there. So you have a couple different options for the newest bed that you've added. And then across the top, 
we have some overall numbers and some bed specific numbers. So we wanted for the user to total the total volume of all the beds combined, the total area, and then just track the number of beds in the project. And then for the selective bed, or maybe call it the active bed, you'll see its specific parameters that are here. And obviously we haven't done anything here for bed two yet. All right, so we're going to design bed two, um, and we're going to use that second method, which is using more of the components panel functionality to build out the bed. But first, I need to jump into my system parameters, and I'm going to select a different chamber. Obviously, we know this was 4500s, but we're going to swap to our newest 7200. So I've switched over to my 7200. Um, I could enter volume length and width, but I'm just going to build this bed out a different way, assuming maybe I don't know a lot of that information. Again, we would recommend if you know what the base of stone is, go and enter it here so that on your output it's a little bit more accurate. We could click generate, but we're going to jump down to components. So I'm going to do something that I know is done where we just want to know what fits. So I'm just going to work with the ghost array here and I'm going to just stretch it so it matches approximately the area of that system that we see there. Um, and just for these boxes that I'm dragging, sometimes they're not there. You just need to click that green arrow to make them visible again. So I'm going to make sure I'm in add mode and I'm going to click autofill chambers. And that's fine. You get this warning because if you had a system there and you had removed some internal chambers, it's going to fill them back in. So you do have to be a little bit careful with that. But for first go, we're just trying to fill out that rectangle that we just made. And now from here, you know, obviously we see our, our volume, the effect on the total project volume, but we're going to go ahead and just start adding some of the inlets and the outlets. So we've got an inlet manifold. Let's see. I think this is our inlet here. So I breezed through this dialog box before, but when you add an inlet, you can see the estimated manifold flow rate. You can toggle the isolator row on and off. You do have structure um, options where you have round and square concrete and niloplast. There's then options depending on the structure that you've chosen to select an elevated manifold or a bottom bypass. You can also modify the size, so 28 is pretty high. Maybe we'll change this down to a 15 by 15 um, and reduce our cost, but also just handle the flow rate as needed. If you have a manifold that has chamber rows on either side, you can switch the direction of the manifold to the other side of the structure. You can modify the number of stubs, and I'm actually going to reduce this one to leave some room for our outlet. You can do stubs every other row, so sometimes we do that for really wide systems. And then we're going to hit on this when we do our interior inlet here. So I've added my top inlet. I'm going to go ahead and add an inlet down here. Let's change this. Maybe we want Nilo. For Niloplast, elevated manifold is the default since we prefer not to have weirs in those structures for access reasons. And we'll just leave the rest of this the same. Definitely wanted to make sure we showed adding an interior inlet because that was some of the newer functionality from this summer. So to add an interior inlet, you need to change over to remove mode first and you need to remove at least one chamber. And I think on the 4500, you need to remove two to leave enough space. So on this one, I'm just going to remove two. And then from there, it's the same workflow for adding an inlet by clicking the inlet button and selecting the chamber that you'd like to add it to. So you have a lot of the same options that we just went through. Um, you will see as you add interior inlets that more chambers can get removed. And we're just doing this to make sure that there's enough room for backfilling of the structure and manifold. The graphics on the screen are close, but they're not exact. So we're being careful to make sure that when we actually go to install this in the field, that our end caps aren't going to be right up against this structure and manifold system. Um, so that's why you'll you'll see that happening. Um, I mentioned we have a very similar manifold dialog box, but one other feature that you get with the interior manifolds is the second direct pipe. So a lot of the times we want to connect this isolator row and make it nice and long. So you can do that just by clicking that button and now you have a nice long isolator row that extends the length of the bed. For internal manifolds, the default structure and manifold, um, the default structure is a niloplast and it's got an elevated bypass. You can do bottoms, um, but 
knowing that a lot of the times these are just internal area inlets, we knew that nyloplast and elevated bypass would be very typical, but you can always modify that. And then I want to make sure to add my outlet here. And what I'm showing, one of what I wanted to show here is there's times where your manifolds are going to overlap. And previously the tool allowed it and it meant that our bill of materials weren't accurate, flow rates might not be accurate in every case. So now there's a warning where the user can edit the manifold that they just added or they can go back and edit the other one. So we're just going to edit current and we're going to remove that so that we don't have that conflict showing up. And again, we'll add our accessories, maybe this one we want, inspection port somewhere in the middle, and a couple insertities for roof leaders that we have. Um, I wanted to come down here and just edit, go here, edit this manifold, because I think it's important that everyone knows, you know, I'm showing two rectangles, but you can create irregular shapes in the tool, um, and it's just a matter of clicking on a chamber and removing it. Um, so you definitely don't have to stick with rectangles. The tool can do quite a bit more um, when it comes to irregular shapes. Right now, we just don't have the ability to, within the same bed, have chambers in different orientations, so north-south versus east-west. But multi-bed gets us a lot closer because we can put another bed very close and start designing it from that perspective. So happy with where we landed with multi-bed to get us closer to irregular shapes. One other capability that I don't know is widely known unless you really started playing with the tool, a lot of the component functionality is here with this select component chamber, but you can also click select row, isolate a row, and you get these circles at the bottom, and these are just selecting the row that you want to modify. So if I click on one, I get this offset dialog box, and as I click that, I can actually offset that row to the other chamber rows. Probably not needed too much, but there are some cases where it pops up, so maybe I wanted to really align that outlet structure with that pipe. Um, you do have that capability in there as well. Switch back. Um, so that really covers the components panel and everything we can do with those buttons and showed a different way to design a system. There is an advanced settings area. Don't recommend using these unless you have to um, because it gets us away from some of our standard offsets that we have, but there are times when the row spacing needs to be increased. Maybe we're just trying to match an engineer's plan with a specified infiltration system and they put a lot of space between <coughs> the chambers. Um, and even more rare, sometimes we want to offset the actual perimeter. You know, normally we have that 12 inch perimeter or 300 millimeters uh, for the metric, but sometimes we want to make that a little bit larger just to get our volume tightened up. So you do have those options if you need them. We would just recommend not using them unless you have to. Okay, so we're getting there, but wanted to jump back to multi-bed management here and just make sure it's clear of how these, these buttons work. So I think they're pretty straightforward. We've done add new bed. You can rename a bed, so if any of the beds you want to rename, you just select it from the drop-down and click that button. We also thought it would be good to have a copy selected bed. So if I jump back to bed one, you can see that it is now highlighted. Um, many times on multi-beds, some of the beds are very similar, so why do the same design effort twice? If I select that, I need to name the new bed that's the copy, so we'll call that bed three, and click save, and it's just gonna take a quick minute to process and design that bed. And if the screen does jump around, but what this is where it can be a little tricky, so it's good to show the bed three just was right on top of bed one. So now you've got your bed three. You can see I have another tab for that bed. If I end up adding more, I need to go back and edit it. Um, so you can copy any of the beds to get, them at, get a starting point for a new bed. And then of course you can delete any of the beds that you have in the system. All right, we're almost through all the functionality here. I'm gonna jump down to drawings and reports. So print system specifications, this is just if you need a simple report and you don't necessarily need all the tool output for CAD and PDF, you'll get a separate report for each bed. 
you can just print it right from the tool. But largely we're using this email drawings and reports button. So once you've finished up your design and you're ready for the CAD file and the PDF and the bill of material, this is the button you press. Both of these buttons are also up at the top just for convenience because you may not have this panel expanded. Um, once you click email drawings and reports, I always find it easy if I jump back up here, unsubmitted will change to pending. And once the system has processed, that will change over to success. <clears throat> and just remember that if for any reason you don't receive the automated email, but you see success at the top, you can always go to your manage projects and download it right from there. All right, just a few more points on our output. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're, we're driving to. So the email, the email has been modified a little bit just to handle multi-bed projects. So that's what I'm showing here. And this was for a demo um, I think we did yesterday. Um, so let's see. So at the top of the email, this was for a multi-bed chamber project. We did want to make sure that the output was still combined like we do today in engineering services. So if you have multiple beds and you got multiple chamber models within that project, it's still going to be in one output package. So you click this to get there. But within the email, you can also download separate output packages for each of the beds individually. And further down in the email is also where you'll have a separate bill of material for each bed in your project. Um, so that's how you would access those. Uh, I did want to just quickly pull up the output. So there's a CAD file with the background image in it that will be sent. And then this is the PDF of that CAD file. So just like we're used to today, we've got a couple cover sheets because we use two different chambers. You'll then have the layout package for each one. And again, I kept harping on that bottom of stone, but this is where it'll pop up. Otherwise, it's just zero and it'll base it off of zero. So it's just good to enter that if you have it. We've got the different bed, did things a little bit different yesterday. So this isn't exactly the one we did today, but we have those. And then you'll have all the standard details, your cross sections, chamber specific details, like the isolator row details and all the other standard details that come along. I'm just trying to get to the background. We did want to make sure that we were able to give overlays. So it'll show each bed individually on its own page. So we've got here bed one, bed two, and then you'll also get an overview with all of the beds combined together. We didn't talk a lot about pipe, but as I mentioned, multi-bed pipe the workflows are exactly the same. Um, the only thing that's really different for pipe is you don't get a combined package because we don't do that today internally. Um, and so when we work through our requirements, we weren't looking to add that in. So you still just get separate packages for pipe, but you can do a multi-bed pipe system just like we have for Chain. And that brings us to the end of our demo. Um, we really appreciate everybody's attention and you know time today we know you're you're really really busy but um, glad everyone was able to join i do once again want to thank the ads development team so adam ken and kevin for all of their hard work to get this wrapped up it's it's a daily grind for those guys and they've done a great job so thanks and have a great rest of your day